فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم ابراهيم النخلي once said people would recite in the night even if it only a little Yazid al-Raqashi Yazid al-Raqashi would say if I fell asleep and then woke up and then went back to sleep يعني without praying in the night may my eyes not sleep this means that he would reprimand himself by asking Allah to punish him and deprive him of sleep for not getting up to pray in the middle of the night he said Ibrahim al-Naqa'i said rahimahullah ta'ala كان يقال it used to be said اقرأوا من الليل read at night ولو Halabashatin, even if it is for as long as one milks a shat. What did he say shat was? Goat, sheep, lamb? It was a ram. Ram, yeah. That's the best translation. Did he say ram there? I didn't say that day. Yeah, but I want to see what he says. So what does he say, Ibrahim al-Nakha'i statement? He just says people would recite in the night, even if only a little. Um, اقرأوا, read من الليل from the night ولو حلب شاتن حلب شاتن means even if it's a duration of milking the ram مثلا وعن يزيد الرقاشي يزيد الرقاشي said إذا أنا نمت ثم استيقظت ثم نمت فلا نامت عيني if I sleep then I woke up then I sleep then my eyes would never go back to sleep again no. The night prayer is given preference because it is a time when the heart is more inclined towards recitation and further away from distractions of different kinds, including necessary chores and the like. This is the best time. The reason why Qiyamul Layl is good at night time is because لِأَنَّهَا أَجْمَعْ لِلْقَلْبِ Your heart is gathered. It's a time when you've got your everything together. وَأَبْعَدَ مِنَ الشَّاغِلَاتِ and you're the furthest from any distractions. Walmulhiyati. And the things that will you, know, you get carried away with. But tasarruf fil hajat. And the things that you need, your chores for example, there's nothing to do. It's night time. So you're far from all of that. Wa min al and you're the most protected from showing off. You're the furthest when it comes from from showing off. With the good that the Sharia has mentioned for the night. There are other virtuous things that the night has anyways. Such as Praying by night also helps prevent the worshipper from falling into the pitfall of worshipping for the purpose of being seen by others and other acts of insincerity. That's why when you're praying at night, don't read loud and don't read too low. Have a moderate recitation. The Prophet ﷺ, one day he came by Abu Bakr praying and the Messenger والسلام, Abu Bakr's recitation was extremely low. So the Prophet asked him, Abu Bakr, why is it that your voice is low? And he said, لَقَدْ أَسْمَعْتُ مَنْ نَادَيْتِ The one who I'm calling, I've allowed him to hear me. Meaning Allah hears everything. So, Alhamdulillah, Allah heard me. Then the Prophet said, no, raise your voice a bit. And then he saw Umar reciting very loud. So in the morning, the Prophet said to Umar, why are you reading that loud? And then Umar anhu said, أُوْقِذُ الْوَسْنَانِ The one who is lazy, who is sleeping at night and snoring, I want to wake him up. وَأَطْرُدُ الشَّيْطَانِ And I'm getting rid of shaitan, destroying him. And this is a reflection of both of their character and their, how they were. Then the messenger said to Umar, lower your voice. So in between the two, you have a bit of recitation, but it's not too loud. That's when the person, that's how the person should read at night. So you're not showing off. There's no shouting so everybody can hear you. It's low. 
And you're not reading it too low where it becomes that no one knows what you're saying. Now. It is also a time of much virtue and reward as is stated in both the Quran and the Sunnah. So this time, at the night time, there's a lot of khayt connected to it. There's a lot of good in the night. Now. Indeed, the Prophet Sallallahu journey to the Masjid of to the Masjid al-Aqsa and his ascent occurred during the night. Did he say prophets? As in apostrophe, yes. Oh. Prophets. Yeah. Now, so the Prophet's journey was on when was he ascended up? When was the Prophet ascended up? At night time he was ascended up. Why not daytime? Virtue of the night. That's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says Subhan al-ladhi asra bi'abdihi laylam min al-masjid al-haram ila al-masjid al-aqsa al-ladhi Subhan al-ladhi asra bi'abdihi laylam Night time So Allah referred to it as what? Night Now Another example of the virtues of the night is the hadith Your law descends every night when half of the night has passed and says, if anyone supplicates it so that I may grant them what they ask for. So here what you realize is that the ascending, sorry, the Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala descending is done at night time, not at daytime. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He comes down at night time and not daytime. The reason is because the virtue of the night again. The night has fada'il, virtues. And Allah says here, هَلْ مِنْ دَاعٍ فَأَسْتَجِيبَ لَهُ Is there any caller who's calling on to me? I can give him what he wants. Naam. Al-Bukhari narrates that the Prophet ﷺ said, There is an hour in the night in which Allah the Almighty answers invocations, meaning it's sure to answer invocations. So in the night there is an hour. يُسْتَجَابُ فِيهَا الدُّعَاءَ the person's dua is accepted every night. Every night there is an hour within the night that if a person supplicates to Allah, what are they going to achieve? The acceptance of the dua. That is very powerful. Because every single one of us has a, has a need. Wallahi, we do. You, I remember I asked two couples that were married, how long have you guys been married for? I think they told me 34, 35, something. They gave me a time. But it was 30 something. And I said to them, have you guys ever made dua in the last third of the night? They've been trying to have kids. They've just never had kids. So I asked them this question. And they said to me, no. I said, have you guys been to a medical place? Like, you know, America, yeah, we've been in America, we went China, we went here, we went there, we traveled, we've been trying, we've, there is nothing we didn't try. But it's just never was, and it's shocking, it's a very common thing by many Muslims. So I said, ask Allah at the last turn of the night. Within that time, there is a time when the dua is what? Accepted. So the one who's looking to have children, the one who wants to get married and is looking for a pious wife, the wife that's looking for a pious brother, the one who's looking for a good job, a halal job, the one who is looking for a good place to reside with his family in, the one who's married, who's having hard times in his marriage, everyone. The one who has illnesses and wants Allah to take those illnesses away from him, Every single one has the opportunity to supplicate at this time. And the dua is accepted. Now, The author of Bahjat al-Asrar narrated with his chain of narration that Salman al-Anmati said, I saw Ali ibn Abi Talib in a dream reciting the following poem. Had it not been for those who stand in prayer by night and those who fast during the day, the earth would have been pounded to nothing but dust beneath you because you are an evil people who do not obey. Now, Ali ibn Abi Talib said, If it wasn't for those 
who have wild, meaning night portion. They've got night prayer that they come with. Who are standing. And another ones who at daytime, they are what? They're fasting, daytime. Then the earth would have been turned into dust. I mean, the earth would have, the earth is made out of dust anyways, but I mean, the earth would have, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala would have opened the earth for you guys. Huh? Earthquake would have happened from beneath your feet. The reason is because in your evil people, uh, which you don't obey us. You guys don't obey us. Now, one receives the blessings of the night's prayers whether one recites a little or a lot. And the more one recites, the higher his rank will be with his Lord. It is, however, disliked to continually spend the entire night in prayer as this may bring harm. For example, it may deprive the worshipper of getting enough sleep. <coughs> yeah. Proof for the fact that a worshipper is rewarded even for reciting a little is by night lies in the hadith of Abdullah ibn Amr ibn al as who said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, whoever stands in prayer by night and recites ten verses will not be written among the heedless. Listen to this hadith. And the Prophet ﷺ, he said, anyone who stands reciting 10 verses, that person is not from the heedless. So if you read 10 verses at night, you are not written as a heedless person. Are you? And he who stands in prayer reciting 100 verses will be written among the, dev among the devoted worshippers. Allahu Akbar. And if you read 100 verses, Qiyamul Layl, you're from the Qaniteen. The Qaniteen are who? The devoted slaves of Allah. A station Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave to Maryam. Wa Maryam ibnata Imran alati ahsanat farjaha. Fa nafakhna fihi min ruhina. Wa saddaqat bi kalimati rabbiha wa kutubihi wa kanat min al Qaniteen. Maryam was from the Qaniteen. A hundred verses only. You be from the devoted slaves of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Naam. And he who stands in prayer reciting a thousand verses will be written among those of enormous or multiplied reward. And anyone who reads um, a thousand verses in night prayer, كُتِبَ لَهُمْ مِنَ الْمُقَنْطِرِينَ You'll be written for those slaves whose righteous deeds is multiplied, increased in amount, and you're above a devoted slave. Now. Sheikh Nasser authenticated this. Someone could recite a hundred very short verses and recite less than someone recites. Ha, no problem. Very long no problem. The, the verses or the amount? The verses. The verses. So. Al mentioned that Ibn Abbas, may Allah be pleased with him, said, Whoever prays two rak'ahs in the night has indeed spent the night standing before Allah and prostrating to him. Pay attention. Before, what did I say? Just pray two rak'ah, right? By Allah. By praying only two. Man salla bil layli rak'atayni Any who prays two rak'ah at night Faqad baata lillahi sajidan wa qa'ima And this individual He has actually devoted his whole night In sujood and qiyam Just two rak'ah You don't need to do a lot Just two Pray two rak'ah And it's as though you spend the whole night Qiyam and sujood نعم فصل في الأمر بالتعهد القرآن والتحذير من تعريضه للنسيان <تصفيق> ثبت عن أبي موسى الأشعري رضي الله عنه عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال تعاهدوا هذا القرآن فول 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 الذي نفس محمد بيده لهو أشد تفلتا من الإبل في عقلها <تصفيق> رواه البخاري ومسلم وعن ابن عمر رضي الله تعالى عنهما أن رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم قال إنما مثل صاحب القرآن كمثل صاحب الإبل المعقلة 
إن أعهد عليا أمسكها وإن أطلقها ذهبت رواه البخاري ومسلم وعن أنس بن مالك رضي الله عنه قال قال رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم عرضت علي أجور أمتي حتى القذاة يخرجها الرجل من المسجد وعرضت علي ذنوب أمتي فلم أرى ذنبا أعظم من سورة من القرآن أو آية أوتيها رجل ثم نسيها رواه أبو داود والترمذي وتكلم فيه وعن سعد بن عبادة عن النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم قال من قرأ القرآن ثم نسيه لقي الله عز وجل يوم القيامة أجدا رواه أبو داود والدارمي Section The command to continuously revise the Quran and the warning against neglecting it here the author rahimahullah he talks about a topic called consistently revising the Quran and to stay far from and to be warned and cautious of forgetting the Quran forgetting it Naam. Abu Musa al-Ash'ari radiallahu anhu said the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said recite frequently this Quran I swear by he who has the sword of Muhammad in his hands it is more prone to flee it is more prone to flee than a camel from its rope. Both Al Bukhari and Muslim narrated this hadith. The Messenger said, Ali Salatu Salam, Ta'ahadu Had al Quran. Repeatedly go over this Quran. Keep it in your hand like this. Fawalladi nafsu Muhammadin biyadi. I swear by the Lord that Muhammad, his soul is in his hand. Lahuwa ashaddu tafalutan. That this Quran, it is. Fast in fleeing from you, min al ibili fi uquliha, then a camel in its rope. If a camel you open the rope slightly, it'll fly, it'll jump, and you don't want to stay in there. The Quran is like that. If it senses a slight release from you, it will go. It needs consistency on the tongue, it needs for you to be going over it again and again. If you lessen on it one day and you slightly become heedless just for one day, it will affect you. Yeah. Ibn Umar radiallahu anhu said that the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, the example of he who keeps the company of the Quran is as he who keeps a camel tied. This is now an example that the Messenger is giving. The one who's keeping the Quran is like a person who's keeping a. Well, that is some of the salaf they used to see if a person can be trusted with something. Because if I give you something, and I know you can keep this, you're never gonna, you're not gonna lose it. They used to see that if they teach you a surah and you keep that surah, you don't forget it, and you make sure you keep it with you, it was a sign that you're a person who keep what you're given. Because the camel, you give it to the person. He will hold it and not let it go and he will keep it tied. The Quran is the same, even more greater. If so if you forsake that and you've left the Quran and you're not memorizing it and you've lost it, then they wouldn't trust anything with that person. That's how the Salaf, rahimahumullah, they were when it came to the Quran. And some of the scholars, they talk about, is it harder to memorize the Quran from scratch or is it harder to keep it? Is it harder to start learning the Quran now from, not from zero or is it much harder to keep it and not lose it? And the fact that they would ask themselves this question shows you how it's easy to forget it. And when you do forget it sometimes it can become a forget so bad that you, it's like you've never, never memorized it again. Now, Ridalika, there was a story Ibn Kalli Khan mentions in his Kitab Wa Fayatul Ayan. A man who saw a woman he loved. He loved this woman. 
and they said he was a Hafid bi kitabillah, he memorized the Quran. He was a Hafid. Powerful in his memorization. Mutqim solidified the Quran. He was known for that. But he saw a woman he loved. She was very, he was very attracted to her. And when he married, when he came for her hand in marriage, she said to him, We can get married, no problem. With the condition that you leave the religion which you're upon. So he considered her proposal. She said, I'm from a family where they won't accept me to get married to a person who is of another faith. So if you're truly interested in me, we would have to have the same faith, the same belief. So he left Islam. And he married this woman. And when he married him, he stayed with her for a while. And so his friends met him again. And this man was known for his memorization of the Quran and his hifz and how he has solidified the Qur'an. So what happened was, My daughter, she's messing up everything. She's digging into people's bags and taking their stuff. She's the Darren of the class. Yeah? She's the Darren of the class. Yeah, she's the Darren of the class. They're going to be persecuted for that, Abu Bakr. Sahagul, you have to persecute this call my daughter, Adaran. <laughs> this recording, she's going to watch it when she's uh, 30 and you're, what, 60? <laughs> is, that this, is that age right? Roughly the same. Mm. So, he, so they met him, Hafid bi Kitabillah. This man has memorized the book of Allah. So they said to him, Did, How is the Quran? How are you with the Quran? And he said, I forgot it all. Except one verse. What verse? Rubbama yawaddu alladheena kafaru law kanu muslimin. The only verse that I remember is that the day of judgment Allah says, رُبَّمَا يَوَدُّ الَّذِينَ That the ones who are disbelievers will wish the Day of Judgment that they were Muslims. The ones who are kuffar will wish the Day of Judgment if they were believers. That's the only verse I remember he said. The verse that was left and it was kept in his heart and Allah did not take from him was what? An ayah that was against him. He said, that's the only verse that I can remember from the Qur'an. Everything else was taken from him. Now, if, if, if he takes care of it frequently, he's able to keep it. But if he neglects it, then it will flee from him. Anas ibn Malik said that the Messenger of Allah وسلم, said, the wages of my nation, meaning the rewards for their good deeds, were shown to me. Even that, which, even that which was as small as a piece of wood that a person throws out of the masjid in order to keep it clean. Likewise, their sins were shown to me, and I did not see a sin greater than that of a person who forgets a verse or a chapter bestowed upon him, meaning that Allah caused him to memorize it and, then, and, and was then forgotten by him due to his negligence. Abu Dawood and Atimudi narrated his hadith, and Atimudi commented on its authenticity. This hadith it mentions that the Prophet said, ujur ummati. My Ummah's reward was all presented in front of me. Even the Qadat. Qadat means the Ud. Ud means not the Ud that we switch. Ud just means twigs and the dirt and the things that he takes from the masjid he throws outside. Every even that little good it was shown that my Ummah do. Okay? Well ummati. And I was even shown the sins that my Ummah all come with. And the Prophet said, Lam ara I did not see a sin greater than min suratin, min al a surah from the Quran or a verse from the Quran that was given to a person and he forgot it. Now this hadith is without a shadow of a doubt, it's weak. Al Imam Muhammad ibn Ismail ibn Ibrahim ibn Bardizbah al-Bukhari al-Ju'fiyu. 
And Imam Bukhari, he weakened his hadith. And Imam Bukhari. And an Imam Tirmidhi did as well. Because Tirmidhi has a book where he asks an Imam Bukhari questions, right? It's called Su'alatu Tirmidhi Lil Imam Bukhari. It's questions that Tirmidhi put to Bukhari, where he asks him questions and he documented those questions. And this hadith is from those hadiths which he asked. And Tirmidhi, rahimahullah, when he put him to it, Bukhari, you said, this hadith is strange. We only know it from this. Naam. Because the, to say that, for example, ذنبنا, I never saw a sin greater than forgetting the Quran. Huh? Where is shirk? Where are other greater sins than this? Huh? Hmm. Sa'ad ibn said that the Prophet said, whoever memorizes the Quran and then forgets it will meet Allah on the Day of Judgment, mutilated or maimed. Abu Dawood and Adar and narrating this hadith. The same, this hadith is also fihi nadar, there's weakness towards it as well. Which is, anyone who, anyone who reads the Quran and he forgets it, he will meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the day of judgment. Ajdam. What is the ajdam? Disconnected? Mutilated or maimed. Ah. Ajdam is body parts missing. And this hadith, some scholars weakened it, some authenticated it, and even though I'm, inc I'm inclined to the weakness of the narration. But how do we reconcile between the view of those who say uh, that this hadith is talking about somebody who what? Who forgot the Quran? So is it a big sin to forget the Qur'an? Based on this hadith, now it's a sin. But the ones who said that it's a sin, they said that the sin is referring to when the person leaves off the implementation. Because the word, the word nisyan, forgetting, what does it mean in Arabic? It's to leave something. Because Allah says in the Qur'an, وَمَنْ أَعْرَضَ عَنْ ذِكْرِي فَإِنَّ لَهُ مَعِيشَةً ضَنْكًا وَنَحْشُرُهُ يَوْمَ الْقِيَامَةِ أَعْمَى قَالَ رَبِّ لِمَ حَشَرَتَنِي أَعْمَى وَقَدْ كُنْتُ بَصِيرًا قَالَ كَذَلِكَ أَتَتْكَ آيَاتُنَا فَنَسِيتَهَا وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى Does Allah forget? So here Allah says anyone who turns away from the Quran, I will give them a very hard life in this world. And also in the hereafter, and that person will be resurrected blind the day of judgment. And then that person will say to Allah, why am I resur resurrected blind? And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will say to them, I forget you. I will forget you in the hellfire, the way, the way you forgot about this meeting, about the Quran and the religion you forgot. So does Allah forget? Is that good? Can Allah say, can we say that? Because Allah is saying, وَكَذَلِكَ الْيَوْمَ تُنْسَى And today you'll be forgotten. That's what some translation would say, forgotten. A'udhu Billah. In the Arabic language, the word nisyan means language-wise, it means tark, to leave something. Sah? It means to leave off something. Because when you forget something, what do you say? I give an example. I say, Akhi, yesterday why didn't you come? You'll say, Oh, I forgot. What did you mean I forgot? I left off coming to you due to my mind being away. So that's what that's what the person is trying to say, right? Huh? That's what it means. So, some of the scholars they say that this hadith means and ثم نسيه, he forgets it, means he leaves off the Quran deliberately. And he walks away from it and he turns away from it. That's what's referred to it. And that's the view taken by Sufyan Athawri, Ibn Abdul Barr, and others. Ibn Abdul Barr, he has a kitab called Al Istithkar, which is a Sharh of Matta Imam Malik. And he explains it there in the eighth volume. Then the author, Rahimahullah, says that Imam al-Nawawi, فِي مَنْ نَامَ عَنْ وِرْدِهِ عَنْ عُمَرَ بْنِ الْخَطَّابِ رَضِيَ اللَّهُ عَنْهُ قَالَ قَالَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ مَنْ نَامَ عَنْ حِزْبِهِ مِنَ اللَّيْلِ أَوْ عَنْ شَيْءٍ مِّنْهُ فَقَرَأَهُ مَا بَيْنَ صَلَاةِ الْفَجْرِ وَصَلَاةِ الظُّهْرِ 
كتب له كأنما قرأه من الليل رواه مسلم وعن سليمان بن يسار قال قال أبو أسيد نمت البارحة عن وردي حتى أصبحت فلما أصبحت استرجعت وكان وردي سورة البقرة فرأيت في المنام فرأيت في المنام كأن بقر كأن بقرة تنطح تنطحني أما تنطحني رواه أبو داود وروى ابن أبي وروى ابن أبي الدنيا عن بعض حفاظ القرآن أنه نام ليلة عن حزبي فرأى فرأى في منامي كأن قائلا يقول عجبت من جسم عجبت من جسم ومن صحة ومن فتى نام إلى الفجر والموت لا تؤمن والموت لا تؤمن خطفاته في ظلم الليل إذا يسري عجبت من جسم ومن صحة ومن فتى نام إلى الفجر والموت لا تؤمن خطفاته في ظلم الليل إذا يسري Section regarding he who sleeps without reciting his portion of the Quran This now the author is going into something that a person used to pray Qiyamul Layl and then now they got carried away with his sleep and they slept that night mm -hmm. yeah. Umar ibn Khattab said that the Prophet وسلم, said whoever sleeps without reciting his set portion of the Quran by night or a part of it and then recites it between the dawn and the prayers would have his recitation recorded for him as though he had recited it during the night narrated by Muslim this is the, how Allah wants good for us. Allah says in the Quran, يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يَتُوبَ عَلَيْكُمْ وَيُرِيدُ الَّذِينَ يَتَّبِعُونَ الشَّهَوَاتِ أَنْ تَمِيلُوا مَيْلًا عَظِيمًا يُرِيدُ اللَّهُ أَنْ يُخَفِّفَ عَنْكُمْ وَخُلِقَ الْإِنسَانُ ضَعِيفًا Allah wants to accept our repentance. Allah wants to forgive us and Allah wants to make matters easy for us. مَنْ نَامَ عَنْ حِزْبِي مِنَ الْلَيْلِ A person sleeps from his night hizb, he sleeps, he gets carried away due to tiredness, hard work that he put in that day, something, he gets carried away so he sleeps. Or he prays some of it and the rest he can't. He normally set himself to just three, just something, but he gets carried away. And then the person goes and he reads it between what? Fajr and Dhuhr. He brings it to the daytime. The reward he's gonna get though, it's like he read it last night. Look how much they would strive. They missed it at night, but they won't just say, Oh, I missed it. Yeah, Qadrullah, Masha'Allah, Fa'al, it just wasn't meant to be. That doesn't exist in their mind. This is debt to them. I'm going to pay it back. I'm not going to let it go by and I'll bring it back. And that's what they would do. They would bring it. They would bring it back now. And now the author now is going to mention some stories of some of the Salaf who, over, who got carried away with sleep and what they saw in their dream happened to them. They saw things in their dream, they missed their Qiyam, they saw things in their dream, now that is, the author is going to mention those for us. Sulaiman ibn Yasar reports <coughs> that Abu Usayn, may Allah be pleased with him, once said, I slept yesterday without reciting my portion of the Quran until daybreak came. And so when I woke up, I said, to Allah we belong and to him is our return. So look, Sulaiman ibn Yassar, he said, I saw Abu Usaid. His name is Malik ibn Rabi'ah, Shahid al-Badr. He participated in the Battle of Badr. He says, Nimtu al I slept at night from the portion that I used to read at night time. I missed my Qiyam al-Layl. I missed it. Hatta asbahtu until the morning broke. I mean until Fajr. فَلَمَّا أَصْبَحْتُ وَنَّ الْفَجْرِ كَيْنْ إِسْتَرْجَعْتُ He said, إِنَّا لِلَّهِ وَإِنَّا إِلَيْهِ رَاجِعُونَ And that's what you say when you lose a what? A loved one. This is what the righteous people say when they lose their loved one. He is seeing it as though a calamity befell him. صح? وَكَانَ وِرْدِي سُورَةَ الْبَقَرَةَ That night I was meant to pray on all of the Surah Al-Baqarah. That was the portion that was designated for me. 
فراي ها تفضل The portion I had intended to recite was Surah Al-Baqarah and that night I dreamt that a cow was butting me Ibn Abi Dawood narrated this hadith He says فَرَأَيْتُ فِي الْمَنَامِ I saw it at night كَأَنَّ بَقَرَةً It was like a cow was coming to me and it was headbutting me with his horns a bull a cow was hitting me Tantuhuni. This is what I saw in my dream. The whole night, that's what was happening to me. So, because it was trying to tell them, wake up and pray. So, I was meant to read Surah Al Baqarah, and I saw a Baqarah in my dream that came to me, that was waking me, waking me up. If you read the Kitab Al Manamat, right, by Ibn Abi Dunya, by Ibn Abi Dunya, Kitab Al Manamat. And also the Kitab al Masahif written by uh, Ibn Abi Dunya. Sorry, Ibn Abi Dawood. Ibn Abi Dawood. And you read the Kitab al Manamat by Ibn Abi Dunya. Both of them have got a lot of stories there. Yeah, yeah? Even in his Kitab al Tahajjud wa Qiyamul Layl. Al Tahajjud wa Qiyamul Layl. Ibn Abi Dunya brings Athar, stories of them. Naam. Ibn Abi Dunya narrated from some of those who had memorized the Qur'an <coughs> and said that he slept one night without reciting his portion of the Qur'an and so dreamt that someone was saying Strange is he who is endowed with strength, health and youth and yet sleeps till the dawn يعني, without waiting to recite the Qur'an when no one is safe from the snatch of death in the darkness of the night as it passes One of the Hufad of the Qur'an he slept a night from his hizb and he saw in his dream a person saying to him عَجِبْتُ مِنْ جَسَدْ مِنْ جِسْمٍ وَمِنْ صِحَّةِ I am amazed with a body and a healthy person وَمِنْ فَتَنْ a youth a person who is mashallah so young, fresh, very young نَامَ إِلَى الْفَجْرِ but this person is just sleeping till fajr That's, this is talking about a person who prays fajr are you there? والموت لا تؤمن and death is not assured خطفاته that is going to snatch you you're not assured from that في ظلم الليل إذا يسري when the darkness of night comes by who promised you that you're going to stay till the morning نعم we've done the sixth bab fifth bab we finished we've now got three more babs to go because remember the tenth one is just the dabt al asma'i wal lughat that are mentioned in the book we're now going to go into <coughs> the issue of the chapter six seven eight and nine so how much do we have we've got four more to go inshallah ta'ala um, i'm feeling a bit sick right now so we'll stop there inshallah ta'ala we'll take a break and then it will be the class at hajj in 45 minutes inshallah so you guys can go eat and inshallah and then, then the hajj class will be on if i said anything wrong or incorrect <coughs> it's from me shaitan and allah and his messenger are free from it subhanak allahumma bihamdik ashadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi